Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's give God a hand praise this morning. Amen, 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 amen. So glad that you are in the house here at Willow Church. My name is Pastor Al Edney. I'm the senior pastor here at Willow Church. So glad that you are in the building with us today. So glad that those are joining on Facebook Live. Welcome to Willow Church Services. Let's open up our prayer services and worship services today in prayer. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord God, with thanks and praise. Lord, we come to you with our hearts in our hands and we give them as a sacrifice of praise unto you. We ask right now that you just inhabit the praises of your people. We desire, Lord God, to please you. We want your pleasure to be upon us today. We want your presence in the building. We want you to touch, heal, and deliver today. And Lord God, meet us here, and we'll be careful to give your name the glory, the show of honor and praise. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say amen. amen. People of God say amen again. Amen. Say amen one more time for the Holy Spirit. Let's give God a hand praise this morning. All right, all right, all right. Join in with us. Stand on your feet. Give a shout of praise. And let's join in with the praise team this morning. We have a guest and, then, and some friends today. Sister Joy Bryant is with us today. Let's give God a hand praise this morning.
clinging symbols. So we invite your presence into this place that you will give the glory, the honor, and the praise on today, God. We thank you for every family, every friend, every person that makes up this congregation of believers today, God. Bless them in a special way. Whatever their needs are, God, you know all things. You're a sovereign God. And so you meet them at their point of need today, oh God. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise. Father, we pray right now that you would bless the man of God that will bring the word of God today. That if your spirit would fall afresh on him today, that the word would flow from his belly like rivers of living water, Father. We thank you right now for the shepherd of this house and we pray a hedge of protection around him and his family. God, we just want you to be glorified today. So we give our all to you today, God. And we thank you for this time of worship, for this time of praise. You be glorified in this house is our prayer. And everybody that believes that prayer, in Jesus' name we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Anybody enjoy that this morning? Oh my, 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 my. Well, I'm telling you, Brother Steve, man, you are just rolling over there, brother. Just rolling over there. Let's give God a hand praise for our worship leader. debuted an album a few years ago, and I'm hoping that she might have some this album some, somewhere if anybody wants to hear more of that music. That's, she's just an amazing worship leader. Thank you. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't you feel like you've been led into the throne room? Yeah, yeah. And the sweetest spirit, I'm going to tell you, there's not a proud bone in her body, boy. She knows what, where, her, where her joy comes from. She knows where her gifts come from. And it's just a pleasure to serve with her. Thank you. Let's give, give God a hand for you. One more time. All right, you may be seated. You may be seated. There is a word from the Lord. How many people want to hear from God this morning? I want to hear what God has to say in this house. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. This guy here, man, he's he wants me to hoop. I can tell. He wants me to. I can feel him just, just pushing me in the background. Let me let me get there. Let me get there. I'm gonna get there. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, the grandmothers, the aunties, the great grandmothers. I'm gonna tell you, I had a praying grandmother. I'm gonna tell you. Uh -huh. I know what Candy Stanton was talking about when she said, I had a praying grandmother. That's what she said. Who called on the name of Jesus. Right? Yeah, I had I had one of those. I had one of those. Yeah, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. So glad that you are in the building this morning in the house of God. You know, the building is not really the church. You know, it's the people. Yeah. You know, it's the people. So glad, so glad that the people of God are here at our 1610 Willard Road campus. And those that are watching on Facebook Live, so glad that you could join in with us. Hope you're enjoying worship uh, at this point. I know we're, we don't want to stop worshiping. We want to continue in worship uh, through the through the sharing of the word, so y'all keep praying. Uh, but welcome again to Willard. We're so excited about being called on this side of heaven to do God's will. You know, it's a privilege to be called to do anything. You know what I'm saying? When God says, "Look, I want to send you to do something," we ought to get excited about being called to God. If somebody says, "Can you hold this door for me?" when the when the visitors come in, you ought to get excited about being asked to serve uh, serve God and His people when He's passing out programs and putting people in seats. You can you can't imagine all that goes into the services on Sunday. So I just want to give God some praise for all of the service oriented folks. 
any sound booths in the, in the preparation of the music and those that are checking as we are still in our, uh, uh, our COVID protocols that are doing such a great job of keeping us feeling and being safe in the building. There's a lot of work that went into being here. So, so glad that you are praying for us. We want to uh, thank you for your prayer and your financial support. You know, as many churches around the country are closing their doors, but God has us open serving uh, reaching and growing families with God. I heard somebody say hallelujah. I want to tell you, that's a, that's a blessing uh, that God would allow us to continue to serve. And, and we, we count it a high privilege and a high honor. Uh, and, but we want to thank you guys for praying for us. We know the prayers of the righteous avail as much. You know, that, means, that means there's much power in, 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 in righteous prayer. So if you keep praying, thank you for your prayer support. Thank you for your financial support. Because, you know, even though the gospel is free, somebody's got to put in the plumbing. You know, somebody's got to put in the avenue for the gospel to go out. So thank you for your financial support. It's been just a blessing during this very difficult time of COVID, during a very difficult time of social unrest, the very difficult time in our country with, with uh, political changes and, and leadership changes. You know, Christ doesn't change as leadership in your country changes. Y'all know that, right? Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I'm gonna hold on to Jesus. I'm not gonna hold on to who might be in office right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna hold on to his unchanging hand. Right, and he will take you through. He will take you through. There are multiple ways to give here at Willow financially. In the building, we have a, a receptacle that you can put your offerings in at the end of service as we exit. You can uh, make out uh, uh, your checks or and give in, in an offering envelope and just drop it in the receptacle. Uh, if you're making out checks today, make them out to Willot Church, W I L L O T T Church. Uh, the, the bank likes that, so you make sure that you. Don't, don't write it to uh, a church that's not this one. Uh, write it to Will. <laughs> you know, we, we would deliver checks, but we'd rather, you know, you write them out to the church that you're in. Amen. Will I Church. Write them out that way. And, and if you're online, you can mail them in. Our, our address is 1610 Willot Road, St. Peter's, Missouri, 63376. You might, you'll see it on the monitors. And the mail still, still is running. You can still send it in that way. But we also have an online giving platform, which is really, really cool. It's called Givelify. It's an app you can put on your phone, and in three easy clicks, you can give in any denomination you would like. And that has been a real blessing. Because you know we're, we receive gifts when people are out of town on vacation or they're at home feeling like they just want to chill at the house. You can still give uh, while and not miss that opportunity. Because you know it's a blessing in giving. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you, and you can't beat God giving, no matter how hard you try. Yeah. I mean, you you can't beat him. You can try to try to beat the Lord, but let me tell you, He'll keep on blessing you and blessing you. He'll press it down. He's, that ain't what, what my sermon's about. He'll press it down, shake it together. And run it over. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen. Amen. Today is a uh, communion Sunday as well. So you, if you have your elements, uh, if you don't have one, just ask the ushers and they can give you one. And those that are online, uh, you got a little time. You know, you got a little time to go to the kitchen and uh, anoint some juice. You know, and anoint some bread, and then come back and have have communion with us. That'll be at the end of services, so you have some time there. Uh, uh, on fourth Sunday, do do want to remind everybody. Uh, there are a lot of hurting people in our community. Uh, I know everybody in here, y'all look so beautiful. I'm sure you ate whatever you wanted to eat this morning and you, you dressed so wonderfully and everybody looks so, I can tell you're smiling even through your mask, right? <laughs> yeah, everybody looks joyful and, and God is really blessed. But you know some folks that are really hurting right now, you know, uh, people are unemployed and people are, are hurting because of loss of life of family members. And it wouldn't it be great if they called the church and said, I need some help and we could help them. Right. So that's what the benevolence offering. Every fourth Sunday, we have a benevolence offering. It's a free will offering you give what God uh, has. To, you have decided in your heart to give that God has told you, and it will be a blessing. We know we're in this peri-COVID time right now, and where there are vaccines out there. And I don't know how you feel about the vaccine. You go before God, and, and you just ask Him what to do. I would ask that everybody just go before God and ask Him. Say, Lord, should I? I, I I've got my second sh second shot. I was I was so excited when I got in line. I got my second shot, you know, and uh, so but I'm still wearing my mask. You know, still being still being safe. And I would ask that you would pray about that. Uh, it is really imperative that we consider others while we are considering ourselves. 
right? And uh, if you want to know more information, there's a there's a slide in that set that says if you want to learn where you can get the vaccine, there's a, a site called vaccinefinder.org. There you go, and you can find out where I think they I think they're giving vaccines at the Starbucks now. I mean, it's everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> right? So you gotta go to you gotta go to a pharmacy. I'm just messing with you. All right, so look up that uh, vaccine finder dot org, and then uh, find out a place where you can get your vaccine. And if you want to have more information, it's, it's nothing like being an informed uh, individual. Amen. You know, ignorance causes fear, Amen. and ignorance. We you know the true definition of ignorance is I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, and I don't know can cause a whole lot of issues. So with so much information out there, uh, educate yourself. You know, if you go to the American Academy of Family Physicians website, you can learn about the vaccines and learn about the situation. And then you make an educated, informed, prayerful decision on what God wants to do with you. If you're listening, say amen. amen. You know, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the old time preacher. I'm doing all the announcements. And <laughs> I'm giving the, the public service announcements as well as preaching the sermon. Ain't that a blessing? That's how the old preachers used to do back in the day. You know, the preacher was everything. He was a post office guy. He was, you know, he worked. <laughs> he did general contract work at your house. He was everything. <laughs> Amen. I'm doing all that today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Before we start in, I, I, have a, I have a something I want to say. I have something that's been on my heart. Uh, you know, we, we do a, a fairly good job being a church that looks like heaven. Just look around you. Just look around you. You know, there's a whole lot of diversity in this room, right? We are the vision of our church is to be a church that looks like heaven. And let me tell you something, there ain't gonna be no black section in heaven. Not gonna be a white section in heaven. Not gonna be a Latino section in heaven. Not gonna be an Asian section in heaven. All of God's children are gonna be around the throne giving them praise. Right? And church ought to be heaven practice. We ought to be practicing what we're gonna do in heaven. We ought to practice it down here. You heard what we were doing this morning? We were worshiping. Worship going to be live in heaven. If you thought joy was leading us in worship, just wait till Jesus steps out there and talk about it. All right now? You sopranos over here, we're going to sing this right now. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to say, I'm a tenor, Lord. I'm a tenor. Come to the tenor section. I see you, sister. I feel like you. Amen. Church ought to be heaven practice. All the love in heaven, all the joy in heaven. Boy, she talked about those those fruits fruits of the spirit, that nine flavored fruit. Of, I ain't even got to my sermon yet. <laughs> the nine flavored fruit of the spirit: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. It's gonna be unleashed in heaven, and we ought to practice that down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah church ought to be heaven practice. Amen. Something has been on my heart and all the things that's going on right now and we know about the diversity in our church and how we ought to be loving each other. He said, the world shall know you are my disciples by the way yeah. you love one another. Yeah. And boy, if you haven't been loved yet, just wait till we get past COVID. If you ain't been hugged, you come to Willow. If you need a hug, you're going to get one. <laughs> I see people that during COVID, they want to hug each other so bad, they be like, I just want to hug you. Look at Renee up there. <laughs> Amen. This is a loving place up in here. Boy, woo, you can't even be down up in here. We're like, you just, you just lift your spirit with all the love. Yeah. Yeah. And what I have seen is a lack of love in our community over different segments of our society. And I was talking to Sister Ivy. I was talking to Sister Ivy. I said, Ivy, you know, what can we do at Willow that would let us, let the world know that we stand as allies to the Asian American Pacific Islander community. All the things that have been happening in, 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 in their community, it, you know, it, it, if it happens to them, it can happen to us. Yeah. If it happens to us, it can happen to them. It, 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 so she, she, she wrote something for me that really, really, I said, how and what should we be saying and thinking and doing as a church that proclaims to be a church that looks like heaven? Yeah. And she wrote this wonderful, beautiful statement that I agree with 100%, and I'd like to read it. The rise in violent acts against Asians, Asian Americans, and Pacific Islanders in the last few months is disturbing. It brings great sorrow. Lives have been lost or changed forever. As Dr. Martin Luther King 
Jr. once said, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Living in fear and paranoia is not how God wants us to live. Romans 12, 10 states, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Therefore, if you see something, say something. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One word from you may interrupt the cycle of bullying. And it may mean the world to someone else. Remember, silence is complicity. Throughout history, it has been the inaction of those who could have acted, the indifference of those who should have known better, the silence of the voice of justice when it mattered most that has made it possible for evil to triumph. That's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that said that, y'all. That's, that's as relevant today as it was then. May love be the byproduct of our righteousness. May our love for one another find, find no boundaries. Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. Proverbs 21, 21. Everybody agree with that? Amen. Let's give God a hand praise. Because we are an ally here at Willock Church of our Asian American, Asian Pacific Islander brothers and sisters. If you see something, say something. Yes, do something. Woo, do something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Sister Ozzy. Thank you, Sister. That was good. Wasn't that well written? Wasn't that well written? Amen, amen. Put a heart all out there. Put a heart out there. And see, we here at Willard are desiring to have a closer walk with God. A closer walk with God. How many people want to be real close to God? Man, I want to be so close to God, I know when he changes his cologne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know when God has God has got a green breath mint versus a red breath mint. I want to be that kind of close to the Lord. I want to be so close to him that what makes him happy makes me happy. What makes him sad makes me sad. What makes him disturbed makes me disturbed. I want to have that kind of intimacy with God. And that's what we're hoping and praying through here at Willow. We're reading through the Bible in two years. And man, I have enjoyed the journey. We call it journeying through the Bible. We just read the, through Joel. Joel, some people say, in chapter 3. And we jumped into Daniel. I know where Sister Lorna is. That, that Daniel is one of, one of Lorna's favorite books of the Bible. <laughs> Every time I come to a different book, then Lorna says, that's, my, that's one of my favorite books of the Bible. <laughs> I don't think Lorna has ever met a book of the Bible that she doesn't like. <laughs> amen, amen. So we read through Daniel this last week, and then we read through the first three chapters of Job. Man, Job went through some stuff. Amen. amen. If you think you're going through some stuff, just read Job. Amen. And then you'll know that God is able to take you through anything. You know, today we're going to continue exploring the names of God. We're going to do it in an interesting way. Uh, it's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. So as I've been reading through the scriptures, I've read through some some prayers that women have offered in the Bible. Man, boy, it's some praying folk in the Bible, but it's some praying women that I want to focus on. Some praying women in the Bible. Okay, we're going to read First uh, Samuel chapter two, verses one through three. You'll see it on the monitors. We're going to read through that. Uh, that, that portion of scripture. Read from the New King James Version of Scripture, and I'll pause uh, at the different uh, segues to give us enough time to transition. Amen. Amen. Let's read this together. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Let's start now. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies. Amen. Because I rejoice in your salvation, no one is holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. Verse 3, talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is the God of knowledge. Underline that, circle that. And by him, actions are weighed. Amen. The title of our sermon this morning is, you know we're in this series called Knowing God, but the title is Praying Mothers. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praying Mothers. Yeah, I don't know, know if I we didn't change that, right? That's, 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 that's something different. The sermon title is Praying Mothers. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I probably did that. All right. Uh, you, may, you may be seated. You may be seated. You know, my mama prayed for me. 
Oh, yes, she did. Yes, she did. I've often told you that in growing up in Natchez, Mississippi, and at the St. Peter's Missionary Baptist Church, you know, and we had a wooden floor church. I, how many people remember those wooden floor churches? And 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 and, and when they when people used to you know have a little beat, you know, you know, yeah, all that, and, and we didn't have any air conditioning, right? So you had the windows open on 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 the west side of the building, but you needed to have the windows open on the east side of the building so that you get some air coming through the building, right? And in that in that church, you know, there was a lot going on, there was a lot of prayer, there was a lot of worship. I always have told you that my mama taught me how to pray and my daddy taught me how to praise. You know, that's a good combination, prayer and praise. And, and not only did she teach me how to pray, she prayed for me. Yeah, she prayed for me. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about because y'all had some praying mamas and some praying grandmamas that got y'all through. And without them, I know we can, we can all talk about it and say this, that without them, we wouldn't have made it through. You know, they prayed for me. They prayed for me. They prayed for me as I grew up and grew out. They prayed for me in my rebellious, my prodigal years. And that even as a pastor, my mama is praying for me. And I, I'm glad that she hasn't stopped praying for me because I'm still a project under construction. Now, I know many of y'all have already arrived, but I am still... I'm still a project under construction. And many of us, if we tell the truth, we will know that you got here by your mama's prayers yeah. and by the grace of God. If you're listening, say amen. amen. Mama's prayers and by the grace of God. Now, there's some powerful prayers of women in the Bible. So we, I just looked through and I, I saw three of them that I just want to want to glean from this morning. It, it, there, there's this powerful and there's a lot that we can gather from the prayers of mothers. And these, these three sisters are mothers and they were praying in a motherly way. And they prayed, hopefully, this, 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 these prayers will encourage you and realize that you're not on this journey by yourself. So, you, know, you know, the devil wants to isolate you. He wants to get you thinking that you are going through something that nobody else is experiencing. But you know, in, in 1 Corinthians it says, there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But then there's some encouragement that says, but God is faithful. Uh -huh. He will not cause you to be tempted above that which you are able. But with the temptation, he'll offer you a way of escape that you might be able to bear. You know, so don't think that you're going, whatever you're going through, don't think you're going through it all by yourself. And that's what I saw in these prayers with some very, very personal, common things that can hopefully reach you and me and let us know that God is in the midst of your circumstances, no matter what you're going through. If you're listening, say amen. amen. So the first, the first uh, 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 woman in the Bible, this first one I want to deal with is Hannah. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we talked about Hannah. Uh, a little bit before we were talking about the names of God, but in 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 the in the text that I just read, uh, Second First Samuel chapter two verses one through three. Let me give you some context because you know a text without context is a pretext to what nonsense. nonsense. Yeah, you got to get some context. You got to know what's going on. And in the text we just read, that was that was Hannah's prayer. She was praying that she had she had received what she had prayed for, and she was giving God some praise. Yeah, before then, Hannah had been barren. She had not been able to have a son or a daughter. She had not been able to have children. And she was praying to God and said, look, if you allow me to have a child, have a son, I vow that I'll give my son back to you for the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah, we can glean something from that. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, he said, look, I'll give you back the son that you give me. And in the second chapter, God gave her a son, and now she's rejoicing. Now, one thing that we got to get from this is, after God has blessed you with the prayer that you've been praying, you need to look back and thank the Lord. Yeah. You know, sometimes we, we pray real hard. Oh, Lord, give me. Oh, Lord, I need this. Oh, Lord, take me through. Oh, Lord, get me out of this storm. And when we get on the other side, we say, okay, I'm glad that's over. Yeah. And we forget to have a praise and worship service. We got to learn how to thank God for what he brought us through. And when you find yourself thanking God, you'll realize what you're going through ain't nearly as bad as what he already brought you through. He'll encourage you to go through what you're going through right now because he's been faithful in the past. 
Yeah, she blessed me with that. She, I said, wow, this sister, man, she is giving God praise for what he responded in prayer and gave her in prayer. There's four things I want you to get from Hannah's prayer. The first thing is Hannah was persistent in prayer. Yeah, when you read chapter one, you see how you, for years she had been barren and Elkanah, her, her husband, had two wives and, and this other sister was just giving it to her because she had babies and she was giving her a hard time. She was making her feel less than less than a woman, making her feel down. You know, in that culture, if you couldn't have, have children, there, there, was, there, there, there seemed to be an issue and, and she was just making her feel so less than. And for years, she has been praying to God that, Lord, give me a son. Lord, give me a son. And he saw her. And she, and she just didn't pray these little wimpy prayers. Yeah, I, 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 I don't really uh, care for Christians uh, giving these, oh, God, if you would just bless me, I really, I really would appreciate it. I want to hear somebody say, oh, God, I need thee. There's a song. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Hey, yeah. I need thee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, bless <laughs> me now, my Savior. I come to to thee. I want to hear somebody pray. I want you to get cry out to God. Anna was crying out to God. Yeah. I'm going through some stuff I can't handle on my own. I need to call out to somebody that can handle my business. Yeah. Hannah showed us to be persistent. She prayed for years to have a son. Yeah. Right? Don't give up in your prayers. God hears your prayers. Amen. Don't give up on God. Don't think that God doesn't hear you. God does. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. She prayed for years. In verse 15 in that same, same chapter, chapter, chapter 1, he says, Hannah poured out her soul before the Lord. Have you ever done that? Have you ever just prayed so hard you, your, your, your voice left you? Prayed so hard you didn't even have any more tears left? Prayed, poured out her soul uh, to the Lord. He said, God called her to be persistent in prayer. She prayed for strength. She prayed for wisdom. She prayed for the petitions of her requests were heard. And it, what it built in her was a consistency and a confidence and a steadfastness. So it's the first thing, be persistent in prayer. The second thing is, she surrendered all before the Lord. Yes, yeah, she surrendered all. You know, some of the things that we pray for become idols in our lives. You know what I'm saying? We pray for something that we eventually, when we get it, we put before the Lord. You want it so bad that it becomes your God. Uh -huh. Yeah, God, I need a new job. And when you get the job, you can't come to church no more. <laughs> you know, I, Lord, I'm praying for a wife. And then when you get a wife, when you get a husband, then y'all on vacation on Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, y'all on vacation. <laughs> what you have gotten as a gift becomes a God and replaces uh, El Shaddai. And what she was doing is she surrendered all before the Lord. The very thing she was praying for, she said, I'll give it back to you for the rest of his life. Isn't that amazing? So she was not saying, I want something to replace you. I want something to replace you, God. She was saying, I want a son to glorify you. Yeah, yeah God will give you the things that will glorify him. Yeah, yeah, pray for things that don't replace God, but help to glorify God in your life. And Hannah showed us that she surrendered all before the Lord. The third thing is, re remember God's faithfulness. When you're praying, that's what I said before, in, in Samuel's, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2, Hannah states, there is no one like the Lord. Who is like the Lord? Nobody. Y'all know that? Who is like the Lord? There you go. No, 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 nobody. She was saying, there's nobody like you, God. Yeah, she remembered God's faithfulness. She remembered that there's no rock like our God. There's no one like the Lord. There's no one besides you, dear God. Hannah recognized God's faithfulness by giving her a son. Yeah, and we must remember that God's faithfulness, even though when things look bleak, God's going to show up and show out in due season. Yeah. The same one that showed out when you needed something 10 years ago is the same God that can show up in your life right now. 
If you're listening, say amen. amen. The last thing on our prayer, she, she, sp she spoke victory despite opposition. I am tired of Christians folding under every time they come up on a problem. Look, if, if God, the names of God that we've reviewed already, it says that he is Elohim. Yeah. That's the one, that's the, that's the creator God, the one that spoke in the world, leaped into existence. You think God can, can speak something? In, you think he can create something right now in your life that you need? God can create stuff in your life just like he created the world in six days. Yeah, he's still God. He is Jehovah. We learned that. He is that relational God, that one that keeps the covenants with his people. Yeah, and, and even though we're going through stuff, we also learn that he is El Shaddai. That's the all-powerful God. Man, I, I, I be praying for folks that come up against me because I, I say, man, you, I know I'm not all that much, but you don't know who my daddy is. Amen. See, if you knew who my daddy was, you wouldn't mess with me. Yeah, you know, there's some folks I won't mess. I won't mess with any of God's kids, no matter how, if I agree with them or not, because God's going to take care of his kids. Yeah. yeah, even though she was going up uh, uh, against opposition, she spoke victory despite the opposition. As I mentioned, Elkanah's other wife was giving it to her, making her feel less than ridiculing her, causing her to, to think that she would never amount to much. But she kept on walking in victory. Yeah, she kept on praising God. She kept on giving God the praise. And no matter what, see, walking in victory doesn't mean that our challenges and our distractions and our issues go away. Walking in victory means I got my hand in the hand of the man that can speak to the water, speak to the waves, speak to the storm, peace be still. I'm hanging out with him. And when you hang out with God, you realize that the, your challenges don't instantly disappear, but you have, you have relationship with the one that can take you through the storm. Yeah. You know, God doesn't always dissipate the storm. Sometimes God says, you got to trust me through the storm. Yeah. And when we get on the other side, our faith is built up because we trusted God through the storm. If you're listening, say amen. amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hannah gave us some great lessons. Let's look at another uh, sister in the Bible. Let's look at another sister. In Matthew 15 chapters, chapter 15 verses 21 and 22, there was this Canaanite woman. Yeah, Canaanite woman. And she, she talked about the fact that is Lord, the Lord's son of David. Now Hannah spoke of this, 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 this Lord, this God, this God of knowledge, the one that, the one that knew everything. You know, Every now and then, I get the idea that I'm, 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 I'm half smart. But then when I think about the fact that God knows everything, that puts me in my place. I get real, 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 I get, I get small in the, in the presence of God, realizing that whatever I'm going through, no matter what I'm be, be, being opposed with, what I'm dealing with, I don't know tomorrow like God. God knows yesterday, today, and forever like we see right in front of our faces. He knows all the details of every moment, of, of, of every instance in time. He knows everything. And Hannah was praying to the God of knowledge. Now, this Canaanite woman was praying to the Lord, son of David. Let me read this for you. Verse 21. When Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Now, a little context here, you know these, these cultures, the Jewish culture and the Canaanite culture didn't get along. Matter of fact, the Jewish people, when they came into the promised land, they took the land that God, put, they possessed the land that the Canaanites had. And most of them were destroyed. But that because of disobedience, there were some that were not destroyed and were still living in the land. So the Canaanites and the, and the Jewish people didn't have relationships with each other. They, they did not get along. But this Canaanite woman saw Jesus in the vicinity, and she had a problem. So what she did, she called out his name. She said, Lord, Curios in the New Testament, that's the, that's, the, that's the word for master, the one that's large and in charge. He said, she said, Lord, son of David. Stop right there, don't go, to, don't, go, don't go too fast. The son of David, when you say son of David, she was recognizing him as the Messiah, the one that they were waiting on. 
The one she had heard about that was going to come and save us all from our sins. Now this is a Canaanite woman. And, and Jesus was entertaining her because she had already stepped over this first level of faith. She would say, look, I need to find somebody that can do something with this demon-possessed daughter that I have. Look, sometimes we might think our kids are demon-possessed. You need to give them to the Lord. <laughs> well, no matter what they're going through, give them to the Lord. Don't try to own and handle your children by yourself. Can the parents say amen? Amen. amen. God is able, Jesus is able to handle whatever your children are going through. You need to go to him and say, Lord! Son of David, the one that's going to save us from our sins, to save us from our situation. There's some interesting elements of this prayer, and I'm going to give you a few of them. When she saw him, she, she tried to get his attention. Have you ever stormed the throne of grace trying to get God's attention? You know, get, Lord, crying out to him. No whippy prayers when you really need something. You need to cry out, as I mentioned before, cry out and call Jesus' name and invite him into your situation. Yeah. yeah, she invited. She said, look, I got a problem. I got something I can't handle. Jesus, I need you in this space. The second thing, she said, then she asked for mercy. She asked for a second chance. She asked that you would forgive me for what I've done. She asked that you, you would give her a second, I need a second chance, Lord. I need, a, I need to get closer to you. I need to get a second chance. And when we go before the Lord, the first thing we need to do is confess our sins unto him. Amen. Yeah, when you, when you see, when you see the, the Acts prayer that Jesus laid out in the model prayer, you see adoration, you see confession, you see thanksgiving, you see supplication. At some point, we need to create, we need to get a clean heart before we go, with, well, we need to clean our hands. We need clean heart and the clean hands. And then she was asking, Lord, forgive me. Lord, have mercy on me. Yeah, she wanted a second chance. She wanted, she wanted not only mercy, she, she needed healing. She wanted him, him to come into her situation and heal this daughter. The third thing, she didn't skimp on calling his name. As I tell you, sometimes on my job, when when uh, things are going on on my job, I, I, we'd be at around the around the conference table. Now everything is virtual, so it's on these Zoom calls where you got the Hollywood Squares, right? Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. On these Zoom calls and the WebEx calls and team calls, you got all everybody sitting there, and somebody might say something, and every now and then I'll say Jesus, because what they're talking about is crazy. <laughs> and they say, Al, you're 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 not on mute. I say, I know I'm not on mute. <laughs> you needed to hear his name. Sometimes we need to call out his name in the midst of what we're going through because in his name, there's power. In his name, there's peace. In his name, there's joy. In his name, there's forgiveness of sin. Sometimes you need to call out his name. And she called on, on his name, the name God. She said, Lord, she said, Yahweh, son of David. That relational God. I want to have, have mercy on me. I want a relationship with you. Oh, son of David, save my soul. All in one line. Have mercy on me. Forgive me for my sin. Yeah, yeah. Yahweh, that's relation. I want to have a relationship with you. Oh, son of David, you're my Messiah. You're my Savior. Save me from my sin. Wow. Yeah, this Masonic, this Messianic title was, was something that Canaanite people did not proclaim a lot, but she wanted to proclaim the fact that I know that you are the Son of God. Yeah, if you're listening, say amen. amen. Last one, last one. This, and, and, and everybody might be super familiar with Mary. How many people know Mary? Yeah. Say, which one, Pastor? Which one? It's lots of Marys in the Bible. I'm talking about Jesus' mom. Yeah, I'm talking about Jesus' mom. His, 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 his earthly mom. Mary. And in, in Luke chapter 1, 46 through 47, there's this wonderful prayer that, that we call the Magnificent. Yeah, when Mary had received this, this great honor that God laid at her feet to say, I want you to be the mother of the Messiah. This little girl, this teenage girl. And Luke 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 46 and 47, it says this. Mary, Mary said this, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. Whew. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Amen. Yeah, she was saying, Lord, 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 God, my Savior. 
beautiful prayer. And all throughout this prayer, when you read the rest of it, when you go back and read all of it, uh, he said, she said, Lord, Yahweh, multiple times. She was letting him know that I, I can't do anything without you. It's not about me. And anytime people want to worship Mary, Mary does not want your worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was worshiping the Lord. She was giving the Lord praise. Yeah, she didn't want your worship. She was rejoicing in the God her Savior. She realized that she also needed to be saved. Yeah. That might dispute some, some people's ideas that Mary might be co redemptress Mary needed to be saved as well. Yeah. She needed a Savior. And she was calling out, God, my Savior, I need you to save me. Wonderful thing about Mary. She understood the place that God had given her. She, this wonderful place that God had allowed her to be in, to be in this, be the mother of God, as we sometimes say, to allow her to be the vehicle where Jesus would be incarnate. Yeah. What a privilege. And she was just rejoicing, this teenage girl. So I see my girls out and during worship, my son, you know, this is my first time having my whole family in worship with me, my beautiful wife, I just want to give God a hand praise for, for this day. You know, just to watch them praise and just to watch them worship. I can think of Mary, what she was doing during this time. She was giving God praise for the honor that he had bestowed upon her. She realized that even though she would be caring and being a mother to the Messiah, she made it clear that she needed to be rescued from her sin, just like the whole world. Yeah, Mary wasn't, Mary wasn't confused. Because the Bible goes on in, in Romans and said, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And she was included in it all. If you're listening, say amen. amen. I'm going to ask the praise and worship team to come on back up. I know y'all are like, wow, are you kidding me? He's, he's done again? Early? Amen. <laughs> no, I got like five more pages. I just want them to stand up. While I'm, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. The, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a great power in prayer. How many people know there's power in prayer? Amen. There's a great power in prayer. There's a, there's a great power in the, in the prayers of the mothers in this church. I'm, I'm going to tell you, without the women in church, many, many churches would have fall, fallen and failed already. Amen. You know, when I grew up in church, there was a few men that were doing different things, but the church was really held together by all the women. Now, you know, one of my ministries, and the brothers knowing this, I, I, I desire men to step into their roles. And we got some dynamic men up in this church. Amen. We have a wonderful time in our prayer time, the second Saturday of second Saturday of each month, of praying about being kingdom men. But I'm also tell you, we got some dynamic kingdom women up in this camp. Yeah, this is up there. Yeah, some dynamic kingdom women. And without the prayers of mothers, in the churches today, we, we, we wouldn't have the things that we have. And I thank God for the praying sisters up in Willow Church. That's praying for our well-being, praying for as we transition, as many of you know, we're, 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 we're in a new season of growth and expansion. We're selling this particular building and buying another, and God is in the process of doing that even right now. And because of your prayers, we are stepping on into that space. But keep on praying. Keep on praying because God desires to do great and marvelous things. Not only just with Hannah in the past, not only with the Canaanite woman in the past, not only with Mary, but he desires to do great things with you and me. And we have to keep praying. We have to keep praying so God would strengthen us. We have to keep praying so God would give us courage that we would be persistent in what God has called us to do. To be unwavering in the commitment that God has called us to. We need to seek his face in all things. If you're listening, say amen. Amen. Yeah, let's let's give God a hand praise this morning. Amen, 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 amen. I'm so excited. Uh, we're gonna step into our time of communion. Uh, I'm gonna read something for you in, in 1 Corinthians, uh, which is our communion area, communion scripture. Thank you, brother. Amen. Amen. So if you prepare your elements as we get into this time. I'm going to read this for you. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. 
And then he had given thanks. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So as we go through communion, we all become proclaimers. We are sharing the gospel message. We are sharing the good news. We say, thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Now, let's, before we get into it, let's, let's do this part. This part is where we need to get this cleared up first. In verse 27, it says, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man, woman, boy, or girl examine themselves. And so let him not eat of the bread or drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to themselves, not discerning the Lord's body. So we're going to take a moment after we read and we're going to take a moment just to reflect and say, Lord, I just ask that you create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And I want us all to gotta take that moment and take that time because only you and God know what you need to be cleansed from. You know, it's inside out, not outside in. You know, sometimes we do the outside in cleansing. You know, we clean up on the outside, but we forget about the inside. God looks at the heart. We look at the outside, but God looks at the heart. So we're going to take time, take some time and look at the heart. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep for if we would judge ourselves. That's what we're talking about. We would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. God wants us to get there so we won't be condemned. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. This is not the golden buffet. This is not golden bread. We, 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 we proclaim it. We're not trying to have a feast. But if anyone is hungry, there it is, let him eat at home. Lest you come together for judgment and the rest I'll set in order when I come. Let's take a moment. I want to pray over your reflections. Father, create in us clean hearts. Renew right spirits within us. You know, Lord God, the things that we've encountered. And you know, Lord God, the things that we have fallen short in. Those things that you told us to do that we didn't do and the things you told us not to do that we went on and did. Lord, forgive us. We confess it before you and you said that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, we don't carry any of that shame with us. We don't carry any guilt with us. We, we drop that off into the sea of forgetfulness and remember it no more because you have work for us to do. So Lord God, here we are asking that you send us. Here we are as we proclaim your death to you coming in. In Jesus' name, amen. The first thing they did, they, they took some bread. You know, usually you can stand. If you don't want to stand, if you can, if you can stand on your feet, please do. They took this bread, and usually the bread didn't have yeast in it. There's something about yeast in, the, in that culture. When you look at the Jewish culture, the yeast represented sin. So most of the bread that they ate in these kind of ceremonies was a flat bread. It didn't have yeast in it because that yeast represented the very thing they were trying to get rid of. So that's what you have. You have a flat bread in front of you. And he said, this is my body. He said, look, you know, this represents the body that will be bruised and battered and nail-driven hands and feet and spear in the side, beard snatched from my chin, from my face, crown of thorns where the blood, because of the thorns of that time, the thorns were quite long and pressed down into my head and the blood will come running down. But my body, he said, I give it for you. So this represents his body. Let's just think about this. This represents his body. Let's take it in. Mm. And then they had a common cup. You know, wine was the 
the beverage of the day. Water wasn't that good to drink. It was sometimes very impure and it could make you sick. And so wine was part of their culture. I've had many people say, well, Pastor, when are we going to start doing wine? I say, okay, let's talk about that. So we don't have wine today. We have some juice. And I think it serves the purpose that we want it for today because this is a representative. This, is a, this represents the blood that he shed. Oh, for his blood. His blood covers a multitude of sin. If it wasn't for the perfect lamb, the perfect Pascal lamb, the Passover lamb, and the blood that was shed because it came from a sinless lamb, it wouldn't mean a thing. But because it came from Jesus, yeah, yes, yes. this blood will never lose its power. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all know that song? Yeah. We all sing that song. Not right now. I, guess I, can I, I, love, I love this dude, man. I love this guy. He feel, he's feeling me, man. I got feel Okay, what key pass? I felt it. I felt it right there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me get through this, brother. We're going we to get there. We're going to get there. If it wasn't for the blood, we would still be in our sin. If it wasn't for the love that Jesus had for us. You know, it wasn't the nails that had him on that cross. It was love that kept him there. He could have called down legions of angels. Come get me. I'm done, Daddy. I'm done. But he stayed there. Because he loved you and he loved me. His blood. His blood. They had a common cup and they passed that cup around. One at a time. This represents the blood. Represents the new covenant in my blood. Yeah. Let's take together the blood of Christ. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole? Again, nothing but the blood of Jesus. We're going to have a closing song by this wonderful, wonderful praise and worship team. And I want to thank publicly again, Sister Joy. I just love me some Sister Joy. <laughs> I mean, man, man, man. I love you. I, I praise God. I remember when she did a debut album, man. It was like church service up in that place. Oh my goodness. I just thank God for her. That's a yield before the Lord as they usher us into our final song. And I'll come back and, and give us a benediction. Amen. I thank God for this time of worship with you all. Aren't you all excited about the Word of God? Give the pastor a hand. Thank God for the Word that has gone forth this morning. And I just, I don't want to break up this spirit of worship in this house, but I do have to say a few things. When I came in today, um, a brother asked me about a CD and so I ran home and I got the CDs. And if anybody forgot to get your mother a Mother's Day gift, yeah, yeah. 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 today. Only $10. If you like to, uh, Lisa, raise your hand. She's running out right now with their red bag in her hand. Lisa has those CDs out in the lobby area for you with pastor's permission. Yeah. Yeah. He has allowed me to sell those to you today. So if you'd like to get one on the way out, feel free to do that. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. I love y'all. I never had any children. I didn't birth any children. Uh, but my great niece came to me as an infant child. She was about 10 days old. And I brought her home. And that's when I learned what y'all go through. <laughs> She's now 12 years old and she's still with me. So I'm a mother. Happy Mother's Day to you. There are other women out there just like me that maybe didn't birth any, but have been uh, a steward, a good steward over someone else's child, or you've been a mentor to somebody. I thank God for each and every one of you. You, We celebrate you today, too. Amen. Amen. And then I want to thank Steve for calling me. I watched Steve and these Eddie children grow up and become the beautiful 
beautiful men and women of God that they are today. And I'm excited about what God is doing in his life. So he said, well, you're our special guest. We want you to sing everything. And I said, well, I want to hear you, Steve. So I told him, I said, can we share the song? He said, I guess. No, I see this. Yeah. He never says no, and that's a blessing in the house of worship. Regardless of what you're asking to do, he'll always give his best and give a yes. So Steve's going to start this song off, and I'm going to finish it up, all right? Let's take it on home. Amen. Praise God. <laughs>
And y'all join me with that? He won't ever leave me. Come on. pastor of a wonderful church. I'm so glad that Jesus is still on the throne. And I might not be his best child, but I'm his baby boy. And I'm so thankful that my daddy loves me. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many people enjoyed themselves today? We're going to need to replace some drums back there. He's tearing them drums up. Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to need some new ones. So thank you for the leadership of Brother Steve. Let's give God a hand for you. I just want to say something I probably should have said at the beginning, but I will not leave this place until I say it. I want to thank God for my girl. My gal, my ice cold water on a hot summer day, my lover, my best friend next to Jesus, yeah. my prime rib. That's my wife. That's Teresa. Let's give God a hand. Ready for the first day. She walk in the room and I just lose control. <laughs> Amen. She still got it. She still got it. Thank you. But well, she still got me. Let's say that. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just don't want this to be a moment in time that we forget about as soon as we get to the car. We ask, Lord God, that the church gathered now become the church scattered that you would go with us, Lord, and before us. And we all here today have said yes and amen to what you have called us to, even before we know what it is. We say yes, Lord, to your word, to your will and your way. We say amen, so let it be. Whatever you have decided, we agree with it. Lord God, as we venture out into this world, you said to be in the world, but not of the world. And you want us to impact the world as both salt and light. Help us to be salt and light in a dark and tasteless generation. Help us to be useful for the building of your kingdom. Yes, God. And at the end of the day, at the end of the, this time, Lord God, we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor that's due your name. Yes, so we ask all these things, all these things we ask in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Name. Let the people of God say amen. amen. The God say amen. joining us today on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining in to this worship service. We appreciate your prayers, your donations, and all the love that you give. If you need anything from us, be sure to reach out to us. We'll be reaching back to you to 
donate into your life. Lord, help us to do that. We'll see you next week, unless Jesus comes back to us before then. In Jesus' name, we love you. Amen.